This video is an invitation to learn about this superb French craftsman. We invite you to watch this video until the end so you can find out how he mastered his rendition of dancers, bathing female nudes, and racehorses. Edgar Degas was a French Impressionist artist famous for his pastel drawings and oil paintings. Degas also produced bronze sculptures, prints, and drawings. Degas is especially identified with the subject of dance. More than half of his works depict dancers. Although Degas is regarded as one of the founders of Impressionism, he rejected the term, preferring to be called a realist. Also, he did not paint outdoors as many Impressionists did. Degas was born in Paris, France, into a moderately wealthy family. He was the oldest of five children of the Degas family from New Orleans, Louisiana. His maternal grandfather, Germain Mousson, was born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, of French descent, and had settled in New Orleans in 1810. Degas began his schooling at age 11, enrolling in the Lycée Louis-le-Grand. His mother died when he was 13, and for the remainder of his youth, he was influenced by his father and several unmarried uncles. Degas began to paint early in life. By the time he graduated from the Lycée at age 18, he had turned a room in his home into an artist's studio. Upon graduating, he registered as a copyist in the Louvre Museum, but his father expected him to go to law school. Degas duly enrolled at the Faculty of Law of the University of Paris in November 1853, but applied little effort to his studies. Degas was a superb draftsman and particularly masterly in depicting movement, as can be seen in his rendition of dancers and bathing female nudes. In addition to ballet dancers and bathing women, Degas painted racehorses and racing jockeys, as well as portraits. His portraits are notable for their psychological complexity and their portrayal of human isolation. At the beginning of his career, Degas wanted to be a history painter, a calling for which he was well prepared by his rigorous academic training and in-depth study of classical art. In his early 30s, he changed course, and by bringing the traditional methods of a history painter to bear on the contemporary subject matter, he became a classical painter of modern life. In 1855, he met Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingre, whom he revered and whose advice he never forgot. Draw lines, young man, and still more lines, both from life and from memory, and you will become a good artist. In April of that year, Degas was admitted to the École des Beaux-Arts. He studied drawing there with Louis Lamothe under whose guidance he flourished, following the style of Ingres. In July 1856, Degas traveled to Italy, where he would remain for the next three years. In 1858, while staying with his aunt's family in Naples, he made the first studies for his early masterpiece, The Bellelli Family. He also drew and painted numerous copies of works by Michelangelo, Raphael, Titian, and other Renaissance artists. But contrary to conventional practice, he usually selected from an altarpiece a detail that had caught his attention, a secondary figure, or a head that he treated as a portrait. By the late 1860s, 
Degas had shifted from his initial forays into history painting to an original observation of contemporary life. Racecourse scenes provided an opportunity to depict horses and their riders in a modern context. He began to paint women at work, milliners and laundresses. Upon the outbreak of the Franco-Prussian War in 1870, Degas enlisted in the National Guard, where his defense of Paris left him little time for painting. Green rifle training, his eyesight was found to be defective, and for the rest of his life, his eye problems were a constant worry for him. After the war in 1872, Degas resided for a time in New Orleans, where his brother René and a number of other relatives lived. One of Degas's New Orleans works, a cotton office in New Orleans, garnered favorable attention back in France. Degas returned to Paris in 1873, and his father died the following year. It was then that Degas learned that his brother René had amassed enormous business debts. To preserve his family's reputation, Degas sold his house and an art collection he had inherited and used the money to pay off his brother's debts. As his financial situation improved through the sales of his own work, he was able to indulge his passion for collecting works by the artists he admired, old artists such as El Greco and such contemporaries as Manet, Pissarro, Cezanne, Gauguin, Van Gogh, and Edward Brandon. The three artists he idolized were Ingres, Delacroix, and Daumière. They were especially well represented in his collection. After 1890, Degas's eyesight, which had long troubled him, further deteriorated. Although he is known to have been working in Pastel as late as the end of 1907, and is believed to have continued making sculptures as late as 1910, he apparently ceased working in 1912. The impending demolition of his longtime residence on the Rue Victor Massé forced him to move to quarters on the Boulevard de Clichy. He never married and spent the last years of his life nearly blind restlessly wandering the streets of Paris before dying in September 1917. Degas did change his style from time to time. The meticulous naturalism of his youth gave way to an increasing abstraction of form. Except for his characteristically brilliant draftsmanship and obsession with the figure, the pictures he created in this late period of his life bear little resemblance to his early paintings. In fact, these paintings, created late in his life and after the heyday of the Impressionist movement, most vividly use the coloristic techniques of Impressionism. Despite all the stylistic evolution, certain features of Degas's work remain the same throughout his life. He always painted indoors, preferring to work in his studio from memory, photographs, or live models. The figure remained his primary subject. His few landscapes were produced from memory or imagination. It was not unusual for him to repeat a subject many times, varying the composition or treatment. He was a deliberate artist whose works, as Andrew Forge has written, were prepared, calculated, practiced, developed in stages. They were made up of parts. The adjustment of each part to the whole, their linear arrangement, was the occasion for infinite reflection and experiment. Degas himself explained, in art, nothing should look like chance not even movement. Thank you so much for watching our video. It means the world to us. See you in the following video.